Legislative political races across Texas are being used as proxy battles between supporters of public education and advocates for more charter schools. For both sides, state lawmakers are key since they will decide how these institutions will be funded. KFDM's Angel San Juan again tonight reports on how two Southeast Texas politicians are feeling the impact between these dueling factions and how it could impact the future of our children's education. Here's this week's classroom report. Charter schools are increasing in number in Texas. They are public campuses that operate independently of a traditional school district. Texas first authorized them in 1995. Through 2020, 338 open enrollment charters have been awarded, and there are now about 750 charter school campuses statewide. Some education groups, such as the American Federation of Teachers, worry charters take money from the broader public school system. I think the biggest goal is to elect people that are friendlier to the prospect of taking money from public institutions and utilizing those public dollars to support uh, for-profit charter programs uh, that do not have to have as much accountability to the public or the state, who can be selective in the students they accept, uh, and who can operate in a way uh, in that is far removed from what is required and mandated uh, by the state of Texas in public schools. Joseph Trahan is running for state representative in District 22, which covers Southeast Texas. He says his support for public schools has earned him the wrath of charter schools now, a political action committee that has spent about a million dollars in a variety of elections this year with the goal of expanding the presence of charter institutions in the Lone Star State. Now, do you think this money from uh, charter schools uh, is impacting or influencing your uh, your race, the one you're in? Absolutely. Uh, that's one of the major reasons that the American Federation of Teachers publicly endorsed me, uh, because there are entities like the Charter School Now PAC that are pouring in thousands of dollars into this race against me uh, because they recognize that they don't have an ally with me. Christian Manuel Hayes is also a candidate in the District 22 race. Neither he nor Trahan reached the threshold to avoid a runoff, so they face off again in May. The winner will be the Democratic nominee in November. Hayes, too, says public schools should be the priority over charters when it comes to state funding. We need to make sure when it comes to our tax dollars that we're making sure that we're putting tax dollars into public schools first. And then we can go into, we can look into charter schools. But what a lot of people forget is some charter schools are actually funded with public dollars because they are public schools. There's needs for special education, whether it be behavioral or whether it be for other educational needs. We just kind of have to stop picking a fight. Hayes, though, is not as critical of charters and believes they can peacefully coexist with public schools. I think they have a good value, especially like, uh, for instance, you have we have three to four different charter schools in our area, and some of them, they kind of filled that void for children who have had uh, behavioral issues. And then there's been some instances where the school district hasn't been able to meet those needs for someone who, who, uh, is, who has special education needs. They need just that little bit of extra, and so there's partners. Bob Hope is one of those schools where it's a public school, even though it's a charter school. So it, it really is one of those situations where it's it's kind of like a new understanding of schools. But I think because sometimes it's so new, it does kind of scare people thinking we're trying to get rid of public schools, which really isn't uh, what I think is on the majority of any legislator's mind, even those who are supporting charter schools. But both agree that the focus in the state legislature should be on funding public education and before allotting resources to charter schools, implement ways of making those institutions more accountable. We can understand that there are some instances where you know, there's more oversight that needs to be done, and people are a little worried about that, and I think we should when it's children. What I think we have to do is to get away from trying to dismantle public education uh, and try to disrupt public educators and school districts and get back to trying to figure out ways in which we can better invest in programs. I'm Angel San Juan reporting. If you have an issue impacting your school district that you would like us to look into, please email us, crisis at kftm.com, or you can call the Crisis in the Classroom tip line, 409-223-7512.